Hi! In this tutorial, we will learn how to read data from real-time database and how to display it on screen using Recycler View. Navigate to console.firebase.google.com Open the project we've created from the first tutorial. From the left panel under Develop section, click on Database. There are two types of real-time databases, Cloud Firestore and Real-Time Database. Cloud Firestore still in beta, so we will use Real-Time Database. Click on Create Database. In this dialog, you can specify the access permission for reading and writing to your database. By default, no application can read or write. Change it to Start and Test mode. This will allow anyone to read and write. This is OK for development. But later on, we will add restrictions on writing to the database and make it authorized just for the authenticated users. And reading could be allowed for everyone. Click Enable. As you can see, there is no tables here. It is just JSON file. Storing data is done by creating tree of nodes. Let's see how to represent this table as JSON tree. Under the root node, add child. Let's call it books. There is no value because it's apparent for all books. In this node, add child. This will be the identifier or the key for representing book record. It has no value because it's apparent for the book record. In this ID node, you can specify the book properties with their values. Add child. The first node will be the title of the book. Add value for it. The second node is the author. The third node is the ISBN. The fourth node is the category name. And click Add. Let's add more books. Now we have enough data to display it in our Android application. Open Android Studio. In the first tutorial, I've created this project, and I established the connection between this application and the Firebase server. Open build.gradle for application level. Gradle has downloaded Firebase core library. Firebase has many features, and each feature has its own library. Real-time database feature has its own library, so in order to work with it, we have to download it. Tell Gradle to do so. Click on Sync Now and wait for the Gradle to download real-time database library. Our application is all about books, so book is the main object. Let's model it. Right-click on Package Folder new java class let's call it book click ok define the properties of the book notice here the property names must match the one you've defined in the tree right click inside the body generate Getter and Setter. Select all properties and click OK.
generate constructor select none generate another constructor but this time select all properties and click OK that's it for the book model class create new Java class I'll call it Firebase Database Helper. This class will be responsible for manipulating real-time database. Click OK. Define a member variable for Firebase Database. Another member for Database Reference. And a list of type Book. And instantiate it. Create a constructor. Initialize the database object and the reference object. We want to reference the notebooks with all its children. Create public void method. Call it readbooks. On the notebooks, add a value event listener object. Every time you update, delete, or insert data, this value event listener object will execute on data change method. Clear the list of books from old data. Define and instantiate a list of type string to store the keys of the books node. Then create for loop. Create data snapshot object. This object will contain the key and value of specific node. We want to take the key and value from books node. The parameter data snapshot object contains the key and value of books node. Get the key of the current node and save it in keys list. Create book object and initialize it from the node's value. Then add the book to the books list. Please pay attention to this point. When you call read books, the value event listener object will be attached to the reference node. But on data change method will not be executed at the same time. In other words, it is a synchronous method. It has different process. In order to link our main process with this process, we need to create public interface. Let's call it data status. Create void method. Let's call it data is loaded. Create two parameters, one for the list of type book and another list of type string for storing keys. All of the interactions with real-time database are asynchronous. So let's create other methods for detecting if the data is inserted, if the data is updated, and if the data is deleted. In readbooks definition, create parameter for receiving an instance of the interface data status and make it final. Then call data is loaded once we have the list of books populated. Pass it the books and keys. Now we have the method for returning books from the real time database. It is time to display it on screen. Open the layout file for book list activity. Delete hello world text view. To display data from real-time database, I'll use Recycler View widget. By default, Recycler View is not included. You have to tell Gradle to download it. Click on File, Project Structure. Under Modules, click on App. Click on Dependencies tab. Click Add, Library Dependency. 
type recycler and search. Select support recycler view. Click OK. OK. Now, from palette window, under common, drag and drop recycler view. To reference this widget in code, give it an ID. Make its layout width and height match parent. Add constraints on left, top, right and bottom. Recycler view will display a list of items. So now we have to define the template for the items. Right click on App Folder, New, Android Resource File. I'll call it Book List Item. Resource type is Layout File. Click OK. Drag and drop Text View. This text view will display the title of the book. Give it an ID. Add constraints on left and top. Make the left margin 4 and top margin 5. Make the text size 20. Add another text view. This text view will display the author of the book. Give it an ID. Add constraints on left and top. Make the left margin 4 and top margin 5. Add bottom constraint and make the bottom margin 8. Change text style to italics. Add another text view. This text view will display books category. Give it an ID. Add constraints on top and right. Make the top margin 5 and left margin 4. Change text style to bold. Add another text view. This text view will display Books code. Give it an ID. Add constraints on right and top. Make the top margin 5 and left margin 4. Add bottom constraint and make the bottom margin 8. Change typeface to monospace. Select constraint layout. Change layout height to wrap content. Add style for this layout. The style will be list separator. Click OK. That's it for the item layout. Now let's create Java class to contain everything about recycler view. Let's call it recycler view config. Click OK. Define a member variable of type context. This will help us to make call for activities methods. Create an inner class, call it book item view. This class is responsible for inflating the layout book list item and populating its view objects. This class must inherit recycler view dot view holder. Define the text views define string variable for holding the key of the book record. Create a constructor. Create a parameter for view group. Override the parent constructor and give it the inflated layout. From layout inflator, 
that is exist in this context, I need you to inflate book list item. Now we can initialize the text views from the inflated layout. Create public void method, let's call it bind. This method will receive book object and the key, then populating text views from the book object. and setting the member key. That's it for the book item view. Create another inner class. Let's call it books adapter. This class is responsible for creating book item view and passing book object and key to bind method. This class must inherit recycler view dot adapter for the view holder book item view create a list member of type book create another list of type string for storing keys right click inside the body of this class generate constructor select all variables click ok Generate Override Methods Select Create View Holder Bind View Holder and Get Item Count. Click OK. In Get Item Count, return the size of the book list. On Create View Holder, return an instance of the book item view and give it the view group object. On bind view holder from the book item view instance, call its method bind and give it book object from the books list according to the required position on screen and the key from the keys list. In Recycler View Config class, define Books Adapter as a member and create public void method, call it setConfig. Create four parameters an instance of the Recycler View, the context, list of type books, and a list of type string for keys. Inside this method, Set the context and instantiate books adapter. Give it the books and the keys. Set the layout manager for the recycler view and set adapter on the recycler view. That's it. Back to book list activity. Define the recycler view. After inflating the layout file, initialize recycler view. Instantiate Firebase database helper class and call read books. Instantiate the interface data status. Once the data is loaded, instantiate Recycler view config class and call set config method. Pass it the recycler view object and this activity as a context and the books and keys. That's it. Run the application.
If you update, delete, or insert new data, you will see the changes instantly. That's why they call it real-time database. Let's add our final touch. Retrieving data from the real-time database may take time, so it is better to let the user know that there is something happening behind the scene by displaying a progress bar. Open the layout file for the book list activity. From palette window, under widgets section, drag and drop progress bar. Place it in component tree, under constraint layout. Give it an ID, move it to the center, right click on it, center it horizontally, and center it vertically. Back to book list activity. Once the data is loaded, find the progress bar and tell it be gone. That's it. Run the application. That's all for this tutorial. I hope it was easy to follow and helpful. Thanks for watching.